Hey you, my name is Thomas Tomska Ridgewell and welcome back to YouTube Money, the series where I'm trying to answer the big questions of how to make money on YouTube and just how much money can be made. Today I'm going to be focusing on merchandising, or more specifically, making money directly from your audience. So first let's talk about merchandise, official products you can buy from a YouTuber to support them. Merchandise includes many things such as clothing, accessories, posters, books, artwork, toys, media, beauty products, collectibles, and mugs. Probably. But where does the merchandise come from? Well, first it needs to be designed, and this could be by the YouTuber themselves, someone they've commissioned, or a fan they've stolen the idea from. A lot of the time, though, the product's design and manufacturing will be taken care of by the people also selling and distributing it, but... Who are they? Well, once the merchandise has been designed, it needs to get made and sold. And the way a lot of YouTubers go about this is the low risk, low profit option, where basically a company will take care of making the merch, selling it, shipping it off to customers at absolutely no expense to the YouTuber. But in exchange, the YouTuber is only given a fraction of the profits. The company keeps the rest of it for themselves as a fee of sorts. The other approach, however, is the high risk, high profit option. Here, the YouTuber will cover the cost to make the merchandise and then either sell it directly to customers themselves or to a retailer. The reason to do this is because when you cut out the middleman, the profit margins are way higher. However, you run the risk of being massively out of pocket if the merch doesn't sell. Let's take my Mind Turtle plushies for example. If I order 2,500 of them, the factory charges me £3.50 for each turtle made. With shipping and storage, that rounds out to a total of around £10,000. I can then take those turtles and sell them directly to people at conventions for £12 or to a retailer to sell in stores for £8 each. So all said and done, an investment of around £10,000 turns into a total of £25,000, with 15000 of that being profit. That is, of course, if we sell all of them. Please buy them, I have so many. Now the last thing worth noting on the high risk, high profit option is bulk ordering and profit margins. Basically, the more merch you order from the factory, the less they will charge you to make each individual item. Say for example, I order 1000 posters and they charge me one pound for each poster they make. But however, if I order 2000 posters, they only charge me 80p per poster. That means that if I sell the poster for five pounds, I'm either gonna make a profit of four pounds each poster or four pound 20 each poster. Basically, the more money you spend, the more money you risk making, but also the more money you risk having spent for nothing if you don't sell the merch. You just you gotta spend money to make money and also risk losing all your money. So I've talked about how merchandise gets made and sold, but what type of merchandise actually sells the best? Well, in my experience, that's t-shirts, posters, and wristbands. But what actually goes onto that merchandise, the designs, kind of depends on the type of content the YouTuber makes and the relationship they have with their audience, specifically what people like the most about them and their channel. However, they can't really go wrong with just putting a catchphrase or some popular moment from their work onto a piece of merchandise. Only if the YouTuber's audience is primarily interested in them as a person can they get away with putting their name or face on something, be it a t-shirt, a poster, or a book they didn't even write. Ah! Ah! That was a lot louder than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so that just about covers the basics of merchandising. But despite the title of this video, that's not the only way to make money directly from an audience. Donation or tipping services like Patreon enable people to donate amounts of money to YouTubers directly just to support them. On Patreon, for example, people choose to donate an amount either per video or per month just because, for love, I guess. Other fundraising platforms include Kickstarter or Indiegogo, where audiences donate money to help fund a project, usually in return for exclusive content, merchandise, or just that warm fuzzy feeling they get from helping to support their favorite creator. But it is worth noting that while these donations usually come with a promise of a product or a perk, they are still just donations, voluntary donations, and not a legally binding purchase. So you could wind up with nothing always worth remembering that. On the other hand, for creators, fundraisers are sort of an unsure risk, unsure profit kind of deal. They have to be very careful when budgeting their projects to do so accurately, because once they receive the amount of money they requested, they are obliged, ethically, not legally, to deliver the product they promised. I myself massively underbudgeted my first fundraiser and had to personally match the amount raised just to get done what I promised I'd get done. So yeah, be careful both people in the equation. So that's pretty much everything I think you could need to know about money making on YouTube. Now obviously there are an endless amount of variables and exceptions, but those are the basics. So if you're watching this series as a YouTuber hoping to make some cash or as an audience member just trying to make sense of the industry you're contributing to, I hope this has helped. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Tomska out.